Sorry, I got stuck in transit there. Hey guys, what's up? Chris from Adaptuition here. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since about late May. Yeah, sorry I dropped off on you guys here, but things got a bit busy. But I'm back now, right? We've had a nice um, July, August vacation. It was, we call it now, summer. Apparently we have summer in Toronto. Um, yeah, so I was in Tobago for a few days looking a little brown. Um, place sounding a bit echoey because um, we did some renovations here and um, I have to put in some curtains and stuff to absorb the sound. So I do apologize if it sounds a bit um, hollow. Now, I know most of you guys are accustomed with me putting out P videos on POA topics, but I do POA math and art math, right? And I am giving myself a challenge. I want to put out, the objective is to put out three videos a week. One for POA, one for math, one for art math. And I do keep accounting, but I'm trying to be a bit realistic in my goals. Although I've been told, be unrealistic and strive for the best. But you had to, you had to go with what works, right? I'm sure you guys know by now, you, you have eight subjects to do, you have SBAs to cater for, and you're wondering how you're gonna do all that with Lessons Plus Life. Guys, we find a way to do it, right? If you, have, if you don't yet have a study schedule, you need to write that stuff down, right? And I honestly believe that if you want to accomplish something, and you believe you can do it and you put in the work, it will get done. And if you're having trouble, if you know it, you will know if you're having trouble, you have to ask for help, right? And that's part, part of the reason I'm here. I want to help you guys because I wish, and I, I did get help when I was having trouble. So I want to do that same thing, right? I really appreciated those people who helped me and now I want to help you guys, okay? Now, today will be a math video, most likely as obvious, uh, obvious from by the title of this video, right? And I'm going to be doing matrices. So it's a math topic. And I'm going to break it up matrices, the larger topic, into about three, maybe even four videos, right? The first video, which is today's video, we'll deal, on, we'll deal with the following. What is a matrix? We're going to talk about the elements, the rows, the columns, different types of matrices. We're also going to be talking about how to add matrices together, how to subtract matrices, and scalar multiplication. So those are the three, four things I'm going to do. We're going to be covering those things in this video. And in a, the next video in matrices, we'll be talking about matrix multiplication which tends to be a bit of a sore point because it's a little weird. And the video after that, I'll be teaching you guys how to solve simultaneous equations using matrices, right? Matrices of transformation, stuff like reflections, rotations, enlargements, that will be an entirely different video that I will do a bit later on, okay? Right, so what you guys should do when you guys are watching videos like this is you should have a pen or a pencil and a, write, a, a notebook, some paper, whatever it is, to, to write down the notes, all right? It, it shouldn't be that you're just watching. I mean, if you've done the topic already and it's just revision, cool. If it is that you're trying to pick up a topic for the first time, when I say stuff out or when I put it on screen, pause the video, write it down. Or, or when you, when you rewatch the video, write stuff down. If you don't write it down, you don't revise, it's not gonna stick. Trust me on that, all right? And, and yes, and practice, right? Get, get your book, get your textbook from school, whatever textbook you have, and practice some questions. The only way it sticks is if you practice. Okay, guys. All right. So, um, enough talk. Let's get to it. All right, guys. So, um, I know some of you guys who have been watching my POA videos are accustomed to me working in Excel, but today I'm going to be writing. And uh, my handwriting is not the best um, with general pencil and pen and paper. And on my laptop, which I'm going to be writing on, it's a little... I like to say my penmanship, Sam. Hashtag, that's hashtag, right? Anyhow, so what I want you guys to do is um, just bear with me and we're gonna jump into it, right? So the first thing we have to do is um, I have to head up my stuff. So where's my pen? Did I have a pen? There you go. Right, so matrix, matrices. Now matrices is the plural of the word matrix, right? It's not matrixes, it's matrices. All right, so matrices. Yeah, as you can see my handwriting. Um, <laughs> good luck with them hieroglyphics, yeah? So a matrix, what is a matrix? So the first thing I want to do, rather than just jump into that definition, show you what a matrix looks like. We have many different types, all right? You can have one, a very popular form that looks like this. So one, two, three, four, that's four, right? You can have one that just says one, two. You can have one that says one, three. You can have, um, you could even go further. Let's say you had one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say you oh, so that um three one four one five that's a five that's a five right five nine right what else um let's say we had one zero zero three let's say we had zero 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 that kind of stuff right so all those things are examples of matrices now it's not a, it's not an exhaustive list you can have 
many, many different types of matrices. But what is something you're seeing in common here with all of these things I presented, right? First thing you should probably see is that, well, everything is it's a bunch of numbers, right? Good. And where are they located? Inside of a pair of brackets, right? Or as the Americans say, parentheses, right? So we have a bunch of numbers in brackets. Now, can you put algebra? Yeah, sure, you can put algebra in matrices. You can put x, y, you can even mix it with numbers, x, y, one, two, that kind of stuff. So it's not just a bunch of numbers in brackets. They are, it's, it's numbers, values, terms, anything in a pair of brackets, right? Um, but that you could say that and have something looking like this. You could have one, three, seven, x, nine, all right? Two, a, but this is not a matrix, right? Because there's a specific way in which you need to list or present the items in a matrix. And by the way, the items, each individual item in a, in a matrix is called an element, right? Just like with, with sets, the items in a set are, are referred to as the elements of the set. The items inside of a matrix are referred to as the elements of a matrix, right? So I'm gonna take this off, right? So each of these matrices has elements inside of them, right? And the elements are arranged, as you can see. So let me, um, let me get some little colorful stuff going here, right? They are, they are arranged both horizontally as well as vertically, right? This one seems to only have a horizontal. This one seems to only have a vertical, right? But that's how you arrange the elements in a matrix, in horizontal rows and in vertical columns, right? So a matrix, so a matrix is um, a group of items. So, sorry, let's not be so generic, right? We're not talking, we're talking, we're, we're in math here, right? A group of numbers, terms, variables, all right, etc. cetera, um, arranged, sorry, one second, right? Arranged in rows and columns within a pair of brackets. Within a pair of brackets. All right, a fancy way I saw this in um, a textbook that I use is uh, it's, it's a rectangular array of numbers or twos. Right, a rectangle. An array is simply another word for a matrix as far as I understand, right? A rectangular has to do with gen general shape, right? Because if you have, for example, let me get a little menu going down here. Um, so you can see, for example, this is a rectangle, this, oops, sorry. I keep having to reselect this thing. That's a rectangle there, right? This is also a rectangle. You, you catch what I'm saying, right? It's, it's length by breadth, right? Rows by columns, columns by rows, that kind of stuff. All right, actually rows by columns, though, though I put columns by rows, right? Anyhow, so let me get back to what I said. So a matrix is a group of numbers or terms or variables, etc., cetera, arranged in, in rows and columns within a pair of brackets, right? There are different definitions, right? Maybe you might have a better one here. Put it in the comments below that I've missed out anything important, right? That happens from time to time, but perfect, all right? All right, okay, so another important thing that we have to talk about is the order of a matrix. The order of a matrix is um, a characteristic, if you could call it that, that helps us to know whether we can add matrices together, whether we can subtract one matrix from another, whether we can multiply two matrices together, right? So it's a very important characteristic. And all it is, all the order of a matrix is, is simply the number of rows and the number of columns. And you always put the number of rows first, followed by the number of columns, right? So for example, so let's, let's get some colors going here, right? So this matrix here has two rows, and it also has two columns. So that matrix is a two by two matrix. The, the next matrix has one line going across, one row, but you have two columns going down. Now a column could just be a single element. You don't have to have multiple elements. Like you, you can see there are two elements going down in each, in each column there, right? You can just have one element that makes up a column, one element that makes up a row. All right, so this here, you had one line going across with two columns going down, so that's a one by two. Just kind of happens to resemble the elements, but that, that's not gonna happen all the time, right? This matrix here now 
has two lines going across and once again a single element could be an entire row or an entire column in this case you have two rows each comprised of a single element but yet you have one column going down comprised of two elements right oops sorry I pressed undo one too many times right so this here this matrix is an example of a two by one matrix all right um, let's check out the rest of them one time so in the other that fourth matrix you have two lines going across and one two three going down all right so that would give us a two by three matrix all right this matrix here you have one two three going across and one two going down that will be a three by two matrix this matrix here this is also a two by two uh, this is also a two by two here as well okay now we have some other little um, certain types of matrices that I'm gonna I'm gonna point out here as well any matrix that is comprised of a single row such as this second matrix here that's called a row matrix row matrix similarly any matrix that's comprised of a single column no matter how many elements now I, I, I did there are only two elements going across in this row but you can have three four five six seven eight nine how many ever elements once there's only one row it's a row matrix similarly in this matrix say there's only one column if you comprise of how many ever rows once it's a single column it's called a column matrix all right so column sorry about that penmanship sinking all right um, those next two matrices no real name for those are just matrices right any matrix such as the first and uh, these is second to last and last one here, those matrices where you have the same number of rows and you see uh, as, as the number of columns so the number of rows is equal to the number of columns those are called square matrices square matrices right and that's where the number of rows is equal to the number of columns r denotes rows c denotes columns all right um there's also this this matrix here is also a, another type of matrix rolled into that as well whenever you have a matrix where all the elements are zero except those elements on the lead diagonal the one that starts at the top left and goes down to the bottom right that's called a diagonal matrix i'm going to do a few more examples just to kind of drive it home all right let me get a you know my pen going on here um right so what i want to do is let's recreate this one so one zero zero three so the only elements here that are not zero are the elements along this diagonal starting from the top left and going down to the bottom right all right let's get a different one so let's say we had one zero 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 two zero 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 three all right so the only elements here that are not zero starting from the top left and going to the bottom right along the diagonal that's also a diagonal matrix diagonal matrix okay cool all right so we have that oh by the way this one here is also called the null matrix anytime you have a matrix where all the elements are zero it doesn't have to only be a two by two right it could be a two by three a three by two or four by four whatever if all the elements are zero that is a null matrix null matrix all right i just want to show you guys a couple little extra things here whoops i was supposed to get my pen back my marker all right <laughs> so this might look like just a single number inside of a bracket but that is actually a matrix how well you have one row which consists of one element and one column also consisting of one element so this matrix here is a whoops pink seems to want to overpower all right that's a one by one matrix all right we also have something called one zero zero one which is uh, another version of this is one zero 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 I thought, so like i'm talking in binary yeah? for those who know base two all right so this is called the identity matrix this will feature when we come to do um, solution of simultaneous equations using matrices right but that's that's going to be um, a bit off uh, a couple of videos down the line all right okay so those are the basics um, of the, the what I call the anatomy of a matrix 
Right? We know what it is, a group of numbers or terms of variables arranged in rows and columns within a pair of brackets. Or you can have matrices, by the way, with square brackets. Eh? You can have matrices in those types of brackets. That is perfectly fine. All right? Um, we know what each item in the matrix is called an element. We know what the order of a matrix is. It's the number of rows versus the number of columns. And we know what a row matrix is. It's a, it's a matrix that has only a single row and any number of columns. A column matrix is a matrix that has a single column with any number of rows. A square matrix is a matrix that has the same number of rows and columns. Not only two by two, you could have three by three, four by four, one by one. All right, um, we know what a null matrix is, what a diagonal matrix is. Okay, so those are all the basics, right? Um, what I want to do now is get into the addition and subtraction of matrices. Now, to know if two matrices can be added together or if we can subtract one matrix from another matrix, to do that, the matrices must be of the same order. All right? Now, this is because when we add or subtract, we add or subtract the corresponding elements. All right? So let me just create two matrices here, A and B. Let's say we want to do, in part A, we want to do matrix A plus matrix B. All right? Sorry. So I'm going to show you guys here some illustrative working where I'm writing out um, those things long ways, right? So let's let's give it a shot. So let's say we had um right, so it's three, one, minus one, four, plus two, minus two, minus three, six. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do, let me go back and get some colors to assist us. So we add the corresponding elements in a matrix, right? So for example, this is the top left, that's the top left item. So those two items are going to be added together. This is the top right, this is also the top right of the matrix, so those two are going to be added together. That's bottom left, bottom left, those two are going to be added together. That's bottom right, bottom right. Okay, so now, of course, uh, I don't expect you guys to use your highlighters in your exam. That's not necessary. This is just for illustrative purposes, right? So another step you can show is you can show the, um, the corresponding items being put together. All right, you have minus 1 plus minus 3, and then you have 4 plus 6. Here. Try to give myself enough space. Clearly, I didn't give myself enough space here. Uh, try to make sure things stay kind of on their side. All right, now, um, where was I? What am I doing? Right, okay, I'm here, sorry. So let's go. So 3 plus 2 will give us 5. 5. 1 plus minus 2 essentially is, well, 1 minus 2. And 1 minus 2 will give us minus 1. Minus 1 plus minus 3 becomes minus 1 minus 3. They're both negative, so add them together and put back the sign. 1 and 3 is 4. Minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. And 4 and 6 will give us 10. All right. Okay. Simple enough, right? That's all there is to addition of matrices. That's honestly <laughs> all there is. All right. Um, I do want to show you guys that matrix addition is commutative. Right. Commutative law says that if, um, for example, what's two plus three? Five. What's three plus two? Five. Does the order of the terms matter? No. So just like with regular addition, matrix addition is commutative. The order in which the matrices appear does not matter or affect the outcome. Let me give you an example. All right, so let's say we had two. So let's sorry. Let me do B plus A. My bad. All right, so let me be illustrated once again. So two and three correspond to two plus three. Minus two plus one, they correspond as well. Sorry, minus three plus minus one, they correspond. And the last pair of items that correspond is the six and the four, right? So we have six plus four. Two and three will give us five. Minus two plus one will give us minus one. Sorry, that's a little far. Yeah. Right, minus three plus minus one becomes minus three minus one, which is, as you know, minus four. Let me shift this around a little bit. That's a little close. Right, that's a little better. And six and four will give us 10. Uh, these two items the same. Yeah, so matrix addition is commutative. It does not matter the order in which the, the matrices appear for addition. All right, um, I just want to um, fling in our next matrix here, matrix C, almost, okay. All right, now, when we have, oh, let me see if I can just minimize that a little bit again. Right, okay, whoops, I kind of pulled that off the screen there, right? <laughs> My bad. 
Okay, so when we have multiple matrices like this, right? Or more than two, and you want to add, let's say you want to add A plus B plus C. Right? The same logic corresponds, right? We could take the matrices, list them out, and add the corresponding elements, right? Now, it, it'll be a bit cumbersome and time consuming to write out those three matrices again. And I actually want to show you guys a little trick you can employ here. If you have already worked out part of, um, of a sum, you can use your solution that you have previously worked out to work out the new question, right? So you can use this answer and this matrix to give you the final answer you need. So you don't have to go and rewrite and rework whatever you have done before, right? So A plus B plus C is equal to the answer from above of A plus B and you just add C to it. All right, so that'll give us, so let's do that. So we have five minus one minus four, 10, plus three minus six, zero, five. All right, so five plus three will give us eight, minus one minus six is minus seven, minus four and zero is minus four, 10 and five is 15. All right, and if you had B plus C, Instead of A plus B, you can take the answer of, of B plus C and just add A to it. And it wouldn't matter if you added A in the front or in the back. Why? Because matrix multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter the order in which it appears. All right, so that's the addition of matrices, right? Addition. We did addition. All right. What we want to talk about now is the subtraction of matrices. All right, cool. So with matrix subtraction, they have to be in the same order, same number of rows, same number of columns. All right, and let's go, let's actually I have a part here, there, right? let's, let's do a part. This is a new section. Okay, so let me make that two look a bit more like a two, looks like, looks like an L, all right. So let's do matrix D minus matrix E. All right, so matrix D is three, zero, eight minus two, I'm mean minusing zero, nine, minus one, four. So once again, we have to deal with the corresponding elements. All right, so you have three minus zero, and you have zero minus nine. Let me clean off some of those arcs so it doesn't appear too cluttered. Now, be careful with this one, because it's eight minus minus one. And then you have minus two minus four. All right, so three minus zero, as we know is three. 0 minus 9 will give us minus 9. 8 minus minus 1 becomes 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 and 8 plus 1 is 9. And minus 2 minus 4, well, they add them together and put back the sign. 2 and 4 is 6, therefore minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6. All right. Okay, seems easy enough, right? Now, addition is commutative. Doesn't matter the order. Is subtraction commutative? Let's just check. Simple example. What's 3 plus, that's 3 minus 2. 1. What's 2 minus 3? Not 1. Minus 1. So, most likely, matrix sub subtraction would probably not be commuted. Let's, let's check it out, right? So, we did D minus D. Let's see if we do E minus D, if that works out to be the same thing, or if it works out to be negative, or whatever, whatever it was. Alright, so let's do. So, we have 0, 9, minus 1, 4, minus 3, 0, 8, minus 2. Okay, so corresponding elements. So 0 minus 3, then we have 9 minus 0, oops, go away, right? Then we have minus 1 minus 8, and then we have 4 minus minus 2, 4 minus minus 2. Okay, so 0 minus 3 will give us minus 3. 9 minus 0 is 9, Minus 1, minus 8, they have the same sign, so add them and put back the sign. Minus 1, minus 8 is minus 9. And 4, minus, minus 2 becomes 4 plus 2, which gives us 6. Hmm, so are these two items the same? No. The numbers, the digits, the absolute values of the corresponding items, 3 and minus 3, 9, minus 9, etc., all those things are the same. The absolute value regardless of sign. But what you are noticing is that the signs are actually reversed. Right? Whatever was positive up here is now negative here. Similarly, whatever was negative up here is now positive down there. Right? So, matrix subtraction of matrices, just like regular subtraction, is not commutative. The order does matter. All right? 
Um, why did I put a third matrix? Oh, I guess I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so same thing. If you, for example, let's say we wanted to do D minus E minus F, right? We already have an answer for D minus E. So what we could do is we could pull that answer, D minus E, and then just minus F from that. All right, so D minus E is three minus nine, nine minus six, and then we're just gonna minus, well, minus one, minus one, two, seven. All right, so you don't have to go and work over the D minus E part of it. We'll put all three of them together and have three numbers in your subtraction. You don't have to do it if you want to do it. Or if it was the first time you work any question, and yeah, sure, you could do that, all right? Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry, let's go. So three minus minus one, three minus minus one, minus nine minus minus one. Then we have nine minus two, and minus six minus seven. All right, cool. So three minus minus one becomes three plus one, which will give us four. Minus nine minus minus one is minus nine plus one, which will give us minus eight. 9 minus 2 is 7, minus 6 minus 7, you add them together and put back the negative sign, minus 13. All right, okay guys, all right, so we, we've done addition of matrices, subtraction of matrices, we ju we've just done 2 by 2, but this could work for once they have the same order. So if we had to do G plus H, sorry, one second, all right. So we know by the way we get back a matrix of the same order. So it's a two by three and two by three. Sorry, not two by three, three by two and a three by two. <clears throat> All right, so we'd have one plus two, zero plus minus four, minus three plus eight, five plus minus six, um, seven plus minus one, and minus two plus three. Right, one and two is three, zero plus minus four is zero minus four, which is minus four. Minus three plus eight is five, five plus minus six is five minus six, which is minus one. Seven plus minus one is just seven minus one, which is six. Minus two plus three is the same as three minus two, which is one. All right, so once again, it doesn't matter the orders, the order of the two matrices involved, the, those orders must be the same, but what they are doesn't matter. It doesn't only have to be two by two. Alright, so what I want to show you guys now is something called scalar multiplication. So you guys might be asking, what is a scalar? Right? Is that something you used to clean fish? No, not that kind of scalar, right? Um, this is simply a number that's going to be multiplied by each of the elements in the matrix. And that number could be an integer, a whole number, it could be a fraction, it could be rational, um, it could be irrational, like pi or root 2. Um, it could also be positive, negative, right? So it's just a number that we're gonna multiply by each element in the matrix. So for example, right? Let's say we had um, N, and let's say N is our scalar, right? It could be N, it could be K, whatever. And let's say that's just two. And let's say we have a, a new matrix A, and matrix A now is um, one, zero, minus two, three. Right, so N, oops. N multiplied by A, is simply going to be 2 multiplied by 1, 0, minus 2, 3. All right, and we are multiplying that 2 by each element inside the matrix. 2 by 1 will give us 2, anything by 0 is 0. 2 by minus 2 is minus 4, 2 by 3 is 6. That's that scalar multiplication, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of examples because we could combine this with addition and subtraction and I want to fling in a fraction just, just for the sake of making sure we cover some extra bases there, right? All right. <laughs> All right, so let's say we want um, 2A plus 3B. Now we have an answer for 2A already, so we don't have to work that over and we can do 3B mentally, all right? If, however, you want, you can illustrate it from scratch. So 2a plus 3 by b. Alright, if you multiply 2 by each of the elements inside of there, you're going to get that. If you multiply 3 by each of the elements inside of there, you're going to get 
that. And if we combine them now, 2 plus minus 9 is minus 7. 0 and 3 is 3. Minus 4 and 12. And, uh, minus 4 and 12 is 8. 6, mi 6 plus minus 3 is 6 minus 3, which is 3. All right, so it's, that, that, that's basically it, to be honest. Right, I, I just want to do one with um, some fractions. So let's do let's do a half of a minus one third of b. All right, so that's a half multiplied by one zero minus two three, and that's one third multiplied by minus three one four minus one. Right, so we have some fraps. A half by one is a half. A half by any by zero is zero. A half by minus two is minus one. And a half by three will give us one and a half or three over two. Plus, a third by minus three is actually minus one. A third of one is just one third. A third of four is one and a third. One third by minus one is minus one third. So even though we have a bunch of fractions to deal with, it actually, it kind of boils down quite nicely because certain things it is going to cancel out or combine very easily. For example, a half minus one will just give us minus a half. Zero plus a third will just give us a third. Minus one plus one and a third, the ones will cancel, giving us with the one third there. And the only one we really need after exercise a lot of brain power over is the one and a half minus a third. Oh, sorry, this was supposed to be minus. Mm-hmm, be careful, you see, even teachers make mistakes. And mine was live on YouTube, all right? So let's let's do that again. <laughs> all right, okay, a half minus minus one is a half plus one, which is one and a half, all right? Zero minus a third is minus a third. Minus one minus minus one and a third becomes minus two and a third. One and a half minus minus a third. Right, so that's, we're gonna come down here and do it. So one and a half is three over two. Minus minus a third will make it plus one third. Now when we're adding or subtracting fractions, what's the protocol? What do we need to do? An LCM, a common denominator. The easiest thing to do here is multiply the denominator together. Two by three is six. Two into six goes three times, and multiply that three by the numerator three, giving us nine. 2 into 6 goes 2 times 2 by the numerator 1 will give us back 2. 9 and 2 is 11, so you have 11 6. Okay, all right guys, so um, that has been your introduction to matrices. So we've covered what a matrix is, we talked about the elements of a matrix, and we, will, we talked about what else? Um, the elements in a matrix, the order of a matrix, we talked about why the order is important, we talked about row matrices, column matrices, diagonal matrices, null matrices, square matrices, We've seen that we can add and subtract matrices of the same order. That's very important. It must be of the same order because we need to combine corresponding elements as per the colors here. All right. So we can do addition. We can do subtraction. And we've seen some, we were introduced to something called scalar multiplication, which is simply where you scale up each of the um, elements in the matrix by multiplying it by a number. All right. Um, so, so yeah, that's so that's basically it. So like I said, I wanna I wanted to keep it relatively short, um, but give you enough to cover the basics to give you a good understanding, right? Um, I will be doing follow up videos with matrix multiplication. I wanted to take a video to do that by itself because it tends to be a little complicated in, in its mechanics, how we actually do it, and um, we will be doing matrix the solution of simultaneous equations using a matrix method, following that. Alright guys, now, oh, I just remembered something else, um, I wanted to say the start of the video, right? Um, a lot of times when, I, when I'm teaching, whether it's this topic or stuff in ad math or accounts, people ask me, so what I got uses in life? It's useless. Now hear what, I agree that the things you learn, you should be able to use. But, you can use it in a way, sorry, let me rephrase that, right? No matter what it is you want to be in life, whatever profession it is, whatever you want to, to do as a job, as a career, right? You're going to have to learn things that you don't know how to do. Um, for example, even if you want to be a YouTuber, right? You're going to have to learn how to edit your videos. And that might be something you know how to do right now. It's something I'm learning to do and it's a very time intensive process. And there are things that I, I try to do that are difficult. And you have to develop what you call grit or tenacity. You have, to, you have to push through those barriers, those sticking points, 
right? Now how, uh, how does this relate to matrices or anything in school that you might not like to learn? There are going to be things in your chosen profession that you're not going to want to do sometimes. Things that you might have to do and you need to be able to go through that process, to push through, right? You might say, well, I'll have more motivation. Don't get tired of it. Motivation is a funny thing. Sometimes when you need it, it's not there. And you need to be able to be your own coach and your own cheerleading section or whatever the case is. You need to be able to motivate yourself. And that is not always an easy thing to do. So what you are doing by going through these useless things is you are developing grit, tenacity. You are learning something new and learning to apply it to a given problem. Even if your problem is just, I need to pass maths to get out of school to do what I, like, I want to do, you still have to do it, all right? So, so please, now these things have application. I don't really want to get into all those things right now. You can Google it if you want, and it might be things at a very high level, fine. But we had to start somewhere, all right? So please, I want you to, if, if it is you're very frustrated with school and things seem very pointless to you, just, you need to understand that you need to learn how to learn. And learning can be very easy, it can be very fun. Um, unfortunately, school a lot of the times doesn't make it seem so. And that's just the system we have right now until we decide to change it, however, however that will happen. I'm not sure, right? But coming back to, to the point, I know I'm kind of rambling here a little bit and I need to, I need to close up because um, I have class starting just now, is take the opportunity to learn how to do something you don't know how to do, right? In the world that you guys are going to be living in and have to work in, learning, unlearning, and relearning are going to be three skills that are going to be highly valuable because things are always in a state of flux. That's why I named my company ADAPT. ADAPT means to change. And yes, I might have said it a thousand times, but change is the only constant. You have to learn how to change too, all right? Anyhow, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, you could give it a like. If you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe. If not, no problem. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, put it down in the comments below. Um, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I know some of you guys are like, well, so we're not on Facebook. That's cool. I'm not forcing it, but I have free solutions for CXC Pass Papers on Facebook for POA Maths, Ad Maths. More POA and Ad Maths, the maths coming slowly but surely because I want to type over the solutions. I used to handwrite them. And as you can see, my handwriting is not the best, so I want it to be legible and correct, right? I do, I do find errors from time to time. Anyhow, guys. All right, so um, I always have trouble saying goodbye and wrapping up these things, but you know what? Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. That's something I had to work on, right? Anyhow, guys, till next time, stay awesome. <laughs>